series haven't decided yet uh, talking about Merklin digital kind of the follow-up to uh, talking about Merklin C track the Merklin system is a comprehensive integrated system for running trains with their C track all with digital control and so over the next two or three episodes I'm going to talk about that digital control system today I want to just talk about uh, Merklin Digital. Okay. Um, before trains became digital, trains were analog. I mean, same thing with alarm clocks and microwave ovens and everything else. Analog. Analog was the way things were done and are still done in many cases. Analog is simply a basic direct control. Um, Model trains were analog until the late 80s. And many model trains, especially uh, in the UK and other places, they still are predominantly analog, which they often will refer to as DC. What's the difference? Analog was a form of direct control, hence it's also called DC. Um, and when you ran a train on an analog system, like every kid's toy train was, um, it simply meant this, that how fast the train went and whatever the train did was directly controlled by the amount of current you flowed into it. To make a train go faster on your track, you turned a dial to increase speed, but what that actually did was increase the amount of electricity flowing through the track. You want the train to go faster, you turn the dial or you slid the little bar on the controller like my old Tyco controller here, and the train went faster. Anything the train did, and if you are over a certain age, let's say if you're over 35 or 40, uh, you probably know your model trains didn't do a whole lot. Uh, they might have lights, they might have a sound, and they some better ones could actually produce smoke, but that was all controlled directly by the electrical current running through the track. You wanted to run trains, you increased the electricity. You wanted to run more trains, you increased the electricity. Well, you can see both a financial and safety issue with that. Um, trains had different sensitivities in their motors back in the day and if you were trying to run a couple of trains on a layout and you just had them powered on one track a they had to go the same way or you create polarity issues um, or you had to do all the insulation I talked about in the previous video but if you had to crank up that power too far you could actually fry the motor you could burn it out and you'd have to either throw the locomotive away or somehow fix it um, lights were just, as long as there was an electrical current, there was a light bulb that would work, but most toy trains had very minimal lights. Uh, sound functions really came in later. Sometimes sound functions weren't even in the locomotive. They were on the control system. You'd hit a button in the horn or the steam engine sound would actually come through the controller and not even the locomotive. Well, that all changed in the 1980s. Merklin was one of the pioneers. Can't say they necessarily invented it, but they were definitely one of the very first companies to go digital. They actually first introduced the idea of digital at the 1979 World Toy Fair, but it didn't hit the market until 1984. And 1984, of course, is always a big year because that's the year Apple came out and started their famous 1984 Revolution commercials and all that. So 1984 was a big year for digital or computer. Um, so what is digital? Well, 
digital is basically a computer, a mini computer. Uh, Merklin began offering decoders, a type of computer chip in a train. Now what this allowed you to do was two things. One, it began to allow you to have more functions, more sound, more light, more functions that your model train could do. But also, in a truly digital system, the decoder controlled the train, meaning you could have a consistent power electrical current running through your layout but still control the speed and direction of the train. Instead of increasing the amount of electric current through the system to make a train go faster, now you had your basic electrical current and the decoder picked up on that current and then told the motor, go faster, go slower. So it made it safer but it opened the world to eventually the entire digital control systems we now see. The Merklin digital control system and what's called DCC for everybody else. It took a few years for this to catch on and in fact there's still a large percentage of model train people regardless of what gauge you're in there's perhaps even a majority of people who still run either basic analog systems or DC and the problem with DC is it has many meanings. It's DC as in direct current uh, which is the um, electrical format versus AC and DC but also DC can mean direct control which is still kind of the same idea as direct current. You turn the knob and how much electric, oh, uh, excuse me, no matter how much electrical current you allow through the track is how fast or slow your train will go. And many, many people still do that system. But Merklin really was at the vanguard of turning the model train industry into what it is today, which is interesting because right about the time they started going digital is also about the time that they began having major financial troubles. So it's kind of weird if you look at it from an outsider's point of view. But anyhow, uh, Merklin created its digital system and they worked with the company Motorola. And Motorola created a language which today is called MM. Merklin Motorola, MM. And uh, this was the binary computer language system to control trains. Now, Merklin was already planning to create fully integrated. How great would it be to computerize the trains and layouts? And so C-Track was a major part of that. They wanted to make it not only easy to go digital, but in fact, they wanted it to become sort of expected you would go digital. So Merklin today is all digital. You cannot buy a Merklin locomotive made in the last 20-25 years that does not have a computer chip in it. Now I'm not here to argue whether Merklin chips are good or not or whether you should get ESU or lens chips because the truth is lens helped develop the original uh, Merklin uh, computer chips. Uh, they were all part of a group that worked together on this project in the 70s and 80s and into the 90s before companies went their own way. So anyhow, uh, Merklin Digital, like any computer language, think of it as Windows or Linux or whatever computer language, computer operating system you want to go, Merklin had Merklin Motorola, excuse me, Merklin Motorola. All right, so Merklin creates chips and a language and what this allowed you to do was Originally, it just created a consistent electrical source through your layout and yet you could still operate your train speed and change direction, of course, but you could slowly start adding functions. You can now not only have lights, you could 
change the lights. You could change the direction. You can change what section of the uh, lighting system you want to work. You can put lights in the cars now. And none of this required additional power sources. Today, as I explained in the last episode, you can wire a ton of stuff straight to your C-Track. Lights, signals, uh, buildings, little command controls, the up and down gates on a railroad crossing for a street, if you put that in. You can operate so much of that. And that's not even talking about shunting, stopping, controlling, which we'll talk a little bit more about in a later episode. Um, but it gave you the opportunity to do so much more with your trains. Everything for Maryland is digital. Their control systems are digital. However, they also still have an analog, which is called Delta, because there are some people who don't like uh, the idea of the chips and they still run older trains that weren't um, digitalized, that weren't computerized. But be that as it may, we're talking Maryland Digital. So Maryland really was at the forefront of converting this old analog model train world and bringing it into the computer age. And today with their wide array of control systems from their big primary expensive control system, the central station, which is on generation three, their little, uh, their primary digital control system, which is called the mobile station, which I will do a demonstration of that in the next video, um, kind of run you through that. Although I did it in another series, I'll probably go a little more advanced into it with this one. I just have to set up an area to uh, demonstrate these things without messing with my layout. Now, Maryland, I mentioned MM, Maryland Motorola. That was their primary code language for all their chips until about four years ago, about the time I got into this hobby. Uh, Maryland created a new uh, language that still works with MM. It's called MFX. And the difference between MM and MFX is that it allows even more digital control and digital functions. Uh, under MM, you could probably get 16 or 18 functions on a train. With MFX, they're going up to 32. So let's stop and just review the digital world. Before, let's say 1984, your train might have a sound in it that was just, as soon as you turn the train on, the sound went. The sound was not even coordinated to the movement of the train. It was just, they had maybe a little um, sound chip. I hate even to call it a chip. They probably had a little speaker and a wire with a little program sound on it, sort of like a tape recorder. You know, not a tape recorder, but the idea, very simplistically done. But usually sounds were done through your control box and not the train. Maybe it had a smoke function. And then it might have the lights, but even directional lights was not necessarily controllable. Many model trains didn't even have lights, but everything was one run straight through the electrical current in the track. And if you turn the electrical current down to slow the train, the lights would dim, the sound would turn off. Once chips were added and there was a long process, which I don't want to uh, waste time explaining, once chips were introduced, now you could do everything that the coolest model trains today can do. And that is, you can add every kind of sound, coupling sounds. Uh, there's a train where you can hear the sound of passengers eating on the restaurant car. <laughs> okay, that one gets me, and I might be with a lot of old timers going, do you really need that one? But it's there if you want it. Uh, the sound of the locomotive drivers talking, uh, horns, the different types of horns, uh, directional lights, high beams, low beams, fog lights, um, automatic directional, the, chain, the, the train changes direction, the lights automatically change. Uh, the sound of couplings, uh, steam release, uh, air brakes, uh, hydraulics, 
uh, the pantographs on electric trains rising and falling, all those sounds are thrown in there to make your model train experience that much more realistic in some regards. Station announcements, multiple station announcements, stop announcements. It is amazing what you can now do with a train. And you have to understand, when I got into this hobby in 2015, at the end of 2015, My previous experience with a train, a model train, was 1972. 43 years. I got into trains thinking, oh, you turn the knob and the train goes faster, big deal. And then I got my first Miracle train without knowing what I was getting into, as I talk about in the other series all the time. Um, and it blew me away what these trains could do. Had they done this stuff 45 years ago, I might have stayed in the train hobby. Might have. But uh, I am a tech geek. I don't necessarily always understand how all this new tech is working. Uh, but the Maryland Digital System is an integrated system so that everything talks to each other. It is amazing. It can be very complex. But again, the Maryland System makes it simple. Put your Miracle train on your Miracle track with your Miracle controller, and if your controller is updated, which I'll talk about in the next video, if the uh, your mobile station or central station is updated, and technically your central station is almost always updated, it just automatically reads it. It automatically reads whatever you're putting in. And if you do have a conflicting address, the new Miracle control systems allow you to change that address like that. Amazing. You just put it on your programming track, and hit change address and pick a new address for it. And voila, your train has that new address, so there's no conflicting with trains that might have the same address. But Miracle is fully integrated. Everything is designed for ease and function. So you take the C-Track, which is already ready to add whatever digital function you want. You just plug it in at in the bottom of the track, whether it's a signal, a light, a uh, stop gate for a crossing, whatever you're going to add, you can just plug it right there at the point where you're connecting it to the track. You just plug it right into the track right there. It already runs and it'll be in your control system very quickly or how to put it in your control system just in case is also very easy. So the Maryland digital system pioneered the amazing world of trains today and uh, for me it's amazing what you can now do with trains and how Maryland has really to use a computer phrase of the last 15 years Maryland is so plug and play ready there is so much less you have to do because of the Maryland digital and with the new MFX uh, system and language uh, they can do even more so again just review, going back to an analog train where maybe you had a light, maybe you had a sound function usually coming out of the box itself, maybe steam, that was it. Three functions at most, and even today in analog control, trains can't do much more than that. Lights on and off. Uh, analog has changed a bit where you can control directional lights and even have a built-in sound function, which again is still run analog it picks up the power from the track and it runs the little um, sound box that they've put in the train. But with digital, it's easier to do it and it offers so much more. And with the MFX system, they're now having uh, model trains with 32 functions and it's not going to be long before they go beyond that. I'm already seeing advertisements for uh, trains that have like 36 functions depending on the type of controller you're running where it's just all digital in hand on your control system. And speaking of control systems, next episode we're going to look at the basic control system, the Maryland Mobile Station. All right, this was the Maryland Outsider and I will see you next episode. I'll be the same.